J-A-Y-E-H-I-L-L. So who is J Hill? He is a 49-year-old guy who wants to impact a nation. He's a guy who is definitely in love with Jesus Christ, a guy who's in love and on mission and purpose to impact adults to young people, um, a guy who is falling in love with leadership. And he believes that leadership is the key of changing the character within uh, an individual. And um, a father, a brother to many, a friend, a cousin, not an uncle, because I don't have any brothers or sisters, but I am just an individual who wants to impact the nation with, um, with power, with change, and with purpose. Um, I'm black, um, and uh, that's who I am. Don't know my whole, you know, total family tree, but I am uh, just a, a black individual trying to bring impact to all races and creeds. I'm a speaker, so I do classes in high, local high schools, middle schools. I speak on a collegiate level as well in small corporations. Um, I definitely talk about leadership every day and all day, and but definitely and foremost, the number one leader to me is Christ. So I'm always trying to exemplify him through the way that I act, the way that I speak, and the way that I treat people. The number of people I'm impacting doesn't make the difference. The impact of capturing their mindset is the difference maker for me. <laughs> Being silly, silly and serious as I say. I'm silly and serious at the same time. Um, I get to, uh, I think I, I hit them with something that's going to impact their mindset and then sometimes I bring it back by being a great storyteller, relating them into my true reality, um, feeding them the knowledge that I, I, I go after surrounding them with the people that who have captured my heart, the people who impact me. So I am that type of person that creates a visual um, impact to their mindset where they can take the journey with me as I'm speaking to their hearts. Well, Jay is a name that I um, got from my mom. Uh, back when I was younger, they used to call me JJ. But as I got older, they called my dad Jim, and I just did not want to be called Jim or Jimmy. So um, my mom said, well, we'll just call you Jay. And she added the E so there could be a difference. The way Jay Hill Speaks started, I was uh, away in a trip in California, and one of my friends was supposed to pick me up from the airport, and she asked me on the phone, you ever thought about being a motivational speaker? I was like, no, Nikki, I'm not thinking about that, but what I really need you to do is be on time so I can see my wife and kids. About 45 minutes later, I'm sitting, at, uh, we were at a college, Exuzu College for this uh, Urban Youth Workers Institute um, conference. And so I'm sitting there and I end up talking, having a conversation with a guy just before we were leaving to go to the airport. He, I asked him what he did and he said, well, I'm a motivational speaker. And I was, you know, got trained by this guy named Dion Jordan. So I, got, I thought that was kind of odd. So about 20 minutes later, I'm on a van going to the airport, guy sitting directly behind me. I said, we just start talking, what do you do? He's like, I'm a motivational speaker. I'm under this guy named Dion Jordan. So I came home, I told my wife, at the time I was working at a radio station as an account executive, I said, babe, I think I'm gonna be a motivational speaker. And I began that process um, seven years and uh, four months ago. I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which I call my Egypt where I once did a lot of damage into a lot of people, to a lot of different places, because I was focused on Jay and not focused on the things above. I was more focused on the things on this earth. So, but now my Detroit, Michigan has been a part of my, me changing and the people that God has surrounded me with that have brought impact to who I am now today. Who I used to be as an individual was a guy who was selfish, not encouraging, a manipulator. So my goal is to do everything opposite of that. And so I deal, a lot of people who are sent to me are those type of individuals. So I'm impacting people who are discouraging, manipulating situations, selfish, lying. I mean, even now, you know, just being in the atmosphere I'm in today, 
dealing with one of my students who has been lying to me, so I have to deal with him even after this. But um, crowds, it's been, I've talked to one-on-ones to actually thousands, so it's, a, it's an amazing process. But the goal of it is, is if you just change one, that will change a thousand. Jesus Christ is ultimately why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, T.D. Jakes, Francis Chan are two orators that I listen to on a regular basis who um, impact my mindset and my soul, who challenge me and with the word and cut me up for me to reevaluate my thinking on how I'm treating my wife, my kids, my, f my fellow brothers and sisters. But I, um, I truly believe in this work. You won't be able to impact people if you're walking empty. Just the transformation. The um, watching people right in front of you, just maybe from the first day to two weeks to a year. Kids I started dealing with 13 years ago and and they're working with kids to watch them fall in love with their gift. You know, your gift will make room for you, but you know, by you, the only way your gift can grow is if you continue to fill your box. You know, when people hear you, see you, they should feel like it's Christmas because they can't wait to unwrap and for you to unpack what you're about to do for their mind. And once you start making them think, and I've watched many people that I have an opportunity to be a part of that process. I'm not the end all, but I've been a part of the process where um, God has allowed me to see change. Change. Uh, I see him as, as very self-assured in that uh, he knows where he wants to lead, especially the kids, and he knows how he wants to get them there, and he puts those plans into action. Um, he's really uh, instilled God into my life. He's uh, a very, very inspirational speaker, and honestly just a great guy to be around at any time of the day. He's just a really good guy. What's your biggest fear? Failing my wife and my kids. Fighting my own demons. I um. I used to do horrible things. I hurt people intentionally. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to do all I'm called to do as a man. I want my four boys to grow up to be men of God. I want my two baby girls to be queens. And I want them to have everything that I was supposed to deposit in them as a father. But to my wife, I want her to be feeling like I'm her priest, her protector, and her provider. And I want her to always realize that I'm her friend. I try to watch what I say and be in tune to what I'm being told to say. I am not a person who writes down a whole speech. Um, I learn from words and look up definitions and create acronyms. And each time I do something maybe that I've done before, it grows. So I think I'm always growing and reassessing on what I said and how I said it and how I might need to change it for the next time, whenever that next time is. Um, I'm always processing to bring something new by what I listen to when I'm having conversations with friends of mine and I'm hearing what I need to say maybe to the next person or the next crowd. Um, even now, um, the new talk will be I am process. 
and we're all on process, but in the process we have to be persistent and we have to be resilient and we have to deal with the obstacles that come along with the process. And like even last year it was unlocking, you know, unpacking and being nurturing and watching out with the people. You have to be with like-minded people and you have to be obedient and courageous and have the knowledge to even be unlocked, to lock into what you need to do. And a part of what happened last year now has brought me to that we need to be a part of I am to understand our process, you know, that we can serve in it and we can be successful in it. But success is, means so many different things to, to a garbage man, to a CEO of a company. No matter what your title is, you still have success in it, and it's a part of your process. So a part of all that is helping individuals remove the garbage that doesn't belong within, expressing Christ, being bold in my faith. Romans 1.16 says not to be ashamed of the gospel. I can share the word by giving the word of God. I can share the word by expressing love. I can share the word by the actions that I display. I need to be a better peacemaker because if I'm chaotic in the inside, I can't bring peace to someone on the outside. So I'm always battling on the inside on how I think with my flesh and how I want to react to when I'm being wronged. But I got to recognize and realize that what is being done to me is nothing but a light affliction. It has nothing to do with anyone else. If I'm frustrated, it's about me. people working with the right people with the same passion and purpose. A land where kids and adults can come. Shops. Scholarships. Funding for the lost. Watching my daughter who will be 15 then and my daughter who will be 20 then and my son who will be 32 and my other son will be 27 and my other son will be 14 and my other son will be 11 watching them be a part of the process of change watching God use them because it's not about me it's about him he's done so much for me You want people's lives to be different, but you have no control over it. So I pray in five years from now, I'll be better at what I do. I'll be at another part of the mission and vision that he's given. Knowing through the whole process he's going to provide. As long as I walk in the steps that he has given me. I'm not chasing um, money. I'm chasing souls. The Bible says a soul winner is wise when he's winning souls. I'm trying to gain his wisdom to win souls for him. If you would ever have me to come and do anything for you, you know, you have a man that's come and prayed before he speaks. The past is the past. I talk about it when it's time. But know you have a person who wants to raise leaders. Because leaders are loyal, empowering, and sort of determined, educated, and respectful. They are the ones who are going to change our nation from the youngest. My six-year-old leads me. We cannot disrespect the young. Because the young were created to lead. And we have to teach them certain perspectives in certain ways, but we cannot shun them when they're teaching us. It's not about respect or disrespect. It's about humility. Humility is the key to life. This respect word, this disrespect word, that's always going to happen. They disrespected him, but he humbled himself to the process. So the question has to be, what are you humbling yourself to? What is your process? Because of part of that process, I am is involved. So I just challenge anyone, whoever sees this, 
inspired by it, not inspired by it, I like or not, I dislike. All that doesn't matter. But just bring change when you speak. Bring change when you hug. Forgive. Let go. And trust the process. I'm done. Thank you.